If you've spent time working on your left knee in your golf swing, well, this video is for you. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, I'm talking to you about the left knee. This is a huge topic. Isn't every topic I cover a huge one? But if you are here, you have no doubt searched the internet for how the left knee works. You will have seen this sort of absolute nonsense. <laughs> and you will have seen golf coaches trying to fictitiously move the knee and all of this funky stuff. Well, I want to put my spin on how I believe the left knee should move. In the backswing, this is when the questions start to occur for most golfers. When the people swing the golf club back, and this kind of goes back to the Faldo era of when we got a beach ball, we whacked it between our knees, held it, and then we tried to turn our shoulders against our knees. So the knees would be pointing out, people would hold them, they'd try and turn their backswing against the knees, and then try and try and create some speed. Well, what a wonderful feeling that was. And I tried that and let me tell you, that was a load of old nonsense. And then you flick on the box and it was back in the day when channel four was the fourth channel that you could watch and then channel four, five came out and you started to see a little bit of baseball and you'd start to see the pitcher swing his left hip up into the air swing his right arm back and then stamp down and throw the ball. Which kind of gets you to thinking, well, if the power in the golf swing is to resist your lower half and turn your top half against it, why are the baseball guys not standing there locking their hips out and trying to turn their upper half against it if that's going to be more powerful? And so the journey of one of the journeys that I went on uh, at a young age, simple as it may be, understanding how the left knee works in a backswing is a biggie. The left knee, for the most part, is another symptomatic reaction of what's going to go up, go on above the knee and below the knee. Depending on where the force and pressure is through the toe and the heel of both feet will influence the left knee. So the more I tend to move towards the toes in the backswing, the more the knee will kick out. The more the weight goes towards the heels, the knee might have a chance of moving more inside and around as we go back but that's not really a huge player. The feet are starting to be influenced by, as I say, what's going on really above the knee and, and through the pelvis and where you're trying to move your upper body. So often the left knee is believed that it needs to point forwards. So as we make a golf swing, we start to feel or believe that that left knee should go towards the golf ball and people believe that it certainly shouldn't swing in and around. There is nothing, there is not a joint between the hip and the foot. So if I want my left hip to swing around and I want my left knee to stay forwards and not kick in, in a backswing, that's going to be pretty hard to do because as my left hip swings around, it does move forward, but it does swing around as well because as the right hip moves back, the left hip moves forwards. If that left knee stays forwards and doesn't swing in, how on earth am I going to rotate my pelvis? So you end up with golfers that keep the knee out and to get some sort of mobility, they then start to move off the golf ball. So you get this knee held out, lateral shift, and and then you get a big arm swing. 
the minute you start to resist in your lower half and resist the knee action, the amount of separation between upper body and lower half really becomes stressed. One of the reasons why Jason Day had a really bad back, holding his lower half off and really trying to turn against it. So as we start to hold the knees off and I start to rotate, that's as much rotation as I've got. If I was to then keep my arms in harmony with my chest rotation, that's about as much backswing as I'd have if I didn't overrun my arms. So the knee that people believe should be pointed out, or certainly hold itself in the same spot that it starts with, makes the chest short in turn, which in turn makes the arms overswing. But of course we see the arm overswing or overrun, and we try to fix that. Once again, dealing with the symptom, not the cause. The left knee in the backswing, depending on how much your pelvis rotates and depending on how much your pelvis moves sideways, will dictate where the, move, the, where the left knee moves to. If you were to stand up dead straight and make a golf swing around you and created as much hip turn and as much shoulder turn as possible, can you see how my left knee is kicking in and around? Depending on if I move laterally in a backswing where I've now got no hip turn, can you now see that my left knee is staying forwards? But that's because I've not moved around. So the world over that encouraged the left knee to stay locked out and forwards took away any opportunity of golfers moving around the golf ball, which is why in the most part, with the knee being held out, a short separation value between upper body and lower half made people overrun their swing because otherwise they would have had a super short backswing to try to gain power. The left knee has to swing around. When you then feel the left knee swing around, we would like you to feel that the force in the feet goes from equal both sides, heel and toe, to diagonal. So there's the force in through my feet. Then as I make a top of my back swing, the force has gone to heel and toe. And then as I've moved around to the other side, it's gone to my heel and toe. Heel and toe, right foot, left foot. Heel and toe, left foot, right foot. But that can only happen if the knees are starting to allow that to happen. The minute I hold out my knee here, it really locks where the pressure can be in my lower half. So that's the backswing and some thoughts that, again, I, I, it's so difficult for me to remedy it for you, but I certainly want to give you some thoughts on how you might want to uh, apply yourself moving forwards. So the left knee swings around in the backswing. And then what we've had a massive influx of is the utter garbage that this left knee turns outwards and we see all this squatting business. When you make a backswing and you create rotation and the hips rotate, the left knee kicks in. Because I'm pulling the golf club from over here to over here, and again, even that is a bone of contention because so many golf coaches tell you not to pull on the handle. Well, let me tell you, you better pull on the handle at the top of the backswing if you want to create some sort of leverage load in the swing. So as you go and pull the golf club, as you're pulling the golf club and you're creating force upwards, because the knees kicked in and around and it's got more flex in it now than it did at the start, the fact that I'm pushing up and straightening the leg and the knee has gone from this point to this point just by the upwards pressure, vertical pressure, it is going to straighten my knee out because I'm straightening my leg out. 
So the knee works outwards because the pelvis moves around because the left leg lengthens, not because I'm standing there trying to move my knee outwards. <laughs> I mean, it's just farcical. I mean, I, I, when I see one, two, three, four coaches on a golfer trying to push and move their people around, it's like, what the? So when you make a backswing, you create force through the toe, you've got some hip action, you've got the knee swinging in, as you pull on the golf club, as you pull on the golf club and you start to push up, all I'm doing is pushing up and the knee is swinging out and around because the pelvis is opening and the pelvis is moving me around the golf ball. So the knee is going from kicked in to kicked out because I've gone down and up during rotation. If I was to create just a simple jump action, I go down, the reason why my knees go forwards is because I haven't created any rotation. I go down. If I was to then create rotation, look how the knee goes. Then as I jump back up, look how my leg or knee swings out and around and straightens my leg up. But I don't stand on the mat, create upright force. And as I'm creating upright force, I'm trying to move my knees around. <laughs> as I'm creating upright force, forget the knees. Christ's sake, the knees are not your objective to change and move. If you make the middle of your body move appropriately, which will help start you thinking about how you're going to start to feel pressure down through your feet, so we get the pelvis and the feet talking to each other, whatever your knees do, let them do. Some might have slightly more arthritic knees. Some people might have better hamstring mobility, but deal with what's going on through the pelvis and what's going on through your feet, and you'll start to feel the knees react in an appropriate way. But don't mess with the knees, people, because it is going to slow you down. It is going to be a stick in the cogs that are trying to mesh. It's faulty, it's poor. Simply put, the knees are reactive. The input needs to be the middle and the feet. Deal with the foot pressure, deal with the hip rotation, and then let the knees do what they need to do. Create vertical force going up and down in a golf swing, which we'll talk a little bit more about going forwards. Done a great video on that, on why you must pull the golf club. Go check that video out. But I wanted to give you a little take on the left knee because the left knee is a biggie. I you know, hear about it all of the time. Oh, what about that left knee? Is that kicked in too much? Left knee is a reaction of, as I say, the pelvis and the foot pressure. I think you'll find that's good coaching, my friends. Thanks for all your support and all the wonderful comments that you're passing on on these videos. It really means a great deal to me, and I hope this has given you some enjoyment this week to make you play better golf at the weekend. See you next time.